Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thanks for joining us again this week. So before we jump in, we want to thank you guys for watching. Yeah. What would really help us out? We give a lot of free content away. And what would help us out if you enjoy it, if you like it, give us a five-star review, write something, leave us a comment on, on YouTube, Facebook, whatever, wherever you follow us. If yeah. you're an Apple podcast or Spotify podcast, go in and just hit the five-star and leave a review. That really helps us out with, so yeah. we keep creating this free content. Also hit us with some comments. We'd love to see the comments and respond back and forth. Subscribe with you. and if you're Absolutely. on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell to remind you of all the new ones that we're putting out. Yep. It would be super helpful for us. For sure. Let's get into it. This week, we're talking about when should you fire and when should you double down and and help mold that employee into who they need to be, right? Mentoring, coaching, whatever. It's yeah. such a difficult concept for us because it's like, that person isn't working, so I'm going to fire them, but I've spent all this time and money developing them and now... I'm not going to do that. Or I need to keep coaching them and get them better, get them better when I should have let them go yeah, a while ago. Yeah, right. And so like, I know they've got potential. They can do yep, it. You know. Yep. So how do you decide which one? So today we're going to cover four different things. Two of the things uh, that an employee is doing, it sh should be coachable, right? Yeah. It, there's four reasons that uh, you're not happy with an employee. Two, you should coach. Two, you got to fire. Yeah. A lot of times these, the, these four reasons, the byproduct of them is you feel like I got to let this person go. Yeah. Right. It just leads you to that place. And two, like you said, two of them are, you should, you should let them go. And two of them, this is a mentoring coaching opportunity. We're diving into the why mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not working out here. Right. Yeah. And so why they're not working out here is more important than I don't like them or I'm unhappy with them. It's I'm unhappy with them because X. And <clears throat> if it's this, let's coach it, let's get it better. But if it's these other things, we got to let them go. So yeah. we're going to dive into that today. Well, and the, the goal the, the goal of this is is typically uh, when you're an owner or a boss, mm -hmm. you, you find yourself on one side of a pendulum where you're either the guy who holds on to a guy longer than he probably should, mm -hmm. um, gives him more grace, gives him more opportunities, and just you should have let him go and you know it, but you're just, you, you hold people longer than normal. Or you're on the other side. And somebody looks at you sideways, chopped off. They don't. They, they don't respect me. But whatever your reasons are, and that what we're trying to do is find a middle point. Yeah. Where there's there's benefits of both sides. Yep. Everybody's heard, uh, you know, higher, slow, fire, fast. Everybody's heard that. It's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. What does that mean? We're, yeah. we're usually tending, and when we were doing a bad job, I would say early on, we were way on the side of the spectrum of. Oh, I can get like, come on, let's we, just help them. Let's help we, them. I care about this guy. I, you know, we got to We got to really lean in and help them. And for us, every time we let that person go, we're like, we should have done it six months ago. Mm -hmm. we, every we've, time. we've lost money. We've lost reputation. We've lost clients. We we've aren't trusted uh, with, with those three clients that they were working with. And it's six months of pay that I was paying them for zero, zero profit return. Well, and, and the reality of that, when, when I look back and reflect at us doing that, there were two main components of that. One is we don't we don't want to fire somebody. Yeah. We want them to work out. We we see that we're when we look at our employees, we see more than just the tools that they bring to the table or yeah. their their ability to do the job. We look at a person who fits in the culture that has the morals, the character, yeah. the ethics, and. And firing them is a failure. It's like I, I didn't lead well. I made a bad hire. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and and we we actually really care about them, and we we know if we fire them, the impact. So uh, let's let's give them another chance. Yep. Let's okay. If we have one more conversation, if I spell it out this way, right? And we would keep them for 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 too long. And so that was one of the reasons. But the other reason that that you know I think is a big factor too, firing somebody causes a cluster of problems. Yep. Um. What? Short term, it's way worse to fire someone, even a bad employee, yeah. than to just band aid it and get get by. We always tried to find that balance between uh, I need to make the best decision for what's best for the company, mm -hmm. and I know that long term firing this person is best for the company, but short term, I, I I probably need to micromanage and coddle this guy for a little while. Limp across the finish line. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it, it's it's a rough spot, and to be perfectly honest. 
a, a lot of times there was some fear around that. And I think that if we had just said, you know what, the writing's on the wall, we just need to cut it now. I think that yes, it would have caused problems, but I think we netted losing more money by keeping people longer than we should have. Yep. You know? Yep, absolutely. So today we're covering four different steps that if you're a note taker, this would be a good podcast to take notes about to, to really refine why and how when you get to the spot of needing to let someone go. Or if you're an employee listening, this is kind of behind the scenes as to this is how your company should be treating you and how they should be approaching you and what you should be doing uh, to keep your job and, and to uh, really uh, uh, connect with your employer when things are disconnected. Right. Right. And so well, one thing ahead. before we get into those yeah. uh, those four things that I think is just really important to say, um, if you have employees and you don't have rules and regulations and clear expectations you are setting this situation up for failure mm -hmm. because if you don't have rules, ex expectations, you know, clear, this is what your job role is, These, this is what I'm going to expect for you to maintain your job, you need to be doing these things. If you don't have that and you get to the place where one of these four or the two that's like, it's time to let them go, it's only going to be you're, you're a big jerk and it's just your opinion yep. you don't like me and that's going to be the culprit that that you don't have any basis of the reason why it's yeah. just you you're mad at it, well and right? setting expectations is number one right so we have four issues that we're going to talk about but it, it, that's inside of our four different sections that, that you need to be looking at so right. section number one is setting expectations yeah. like you're discuss like you're talking about number two is figuring out what is disconnected number three is finding the issue that's causing that disconnect and then number four is your corrective action. That's right. And then the the fifth one is actually the the, the firing the fire. conversation. Right. So right. we're going to talk about those four: the setting expectations, figuring out the disconnect, finding the issue, and then corrective action. And within those, the the four that we were talking about at the, at the opening, the four different issues that it might be or is part of number three, right? right. The, these two issues, let's coach it up. These two issues, let's let them go. Right. So. Diving into that, setting expectations as a company, there's really three ways that we set expectations for our employees. If you don't have these in place, we preach them all the time, so we're not going to stay here very long in the conversation, but number one is a job description. Right? Basic. If you yeah. don't have a job description, then you are uh, setting that person up to fail because you have no meter to uh, to measure the person and say, okay, this is exactly what the, what's expected out of you. This is where you were falling short. This is what I need you to fix. If I don't have that, how do I know that you know what's expected? Right, and it's also, it, it's very unfair to an employee. Absolutely. Because they don't know whether they're succeeding or failing. And their job description, if if they were to write their own, is going to change monthly, right? Yeah. This month, I'm your assistant. Next month, I'm running my own job. The next month, well, that, I don't have any jobs, so I'm doing this other thing the next month, right? And so- If I'm your employee and I don't have a job description- and it just, it, it's wherever you send me on yep. a whim, my only regulator uh, of the temperature of whether I'm doing this right or yep. not is whether you're smiling at me. Yep. Are you happy with me? Yep. And, right? and, and people have, well, I have a job description. Well, my boss gave me a job description. I, I gave them one. It is not about having a job description that says you're a project manager, you're going to be writing estimates, and I need you to do this. It is a highly detailed step-by-step -step of how they do their job. Uh, w along with the job description, the next thing we have is how do you uh, walk them through the company handbook that is kind of the, the more rules and regulations as to what you can and can't do, mm -hmm. along with what's the onboard and training with this is how we want your week to run. This is what uh, what success looks like each week, uh, talking through that onboarding. So having those things are setting clear guidelines of what is and isn't acceptable mm -hmm. to where everything is black and white. Yeah. because. If you are going to lose your job here, and this is the theme of the entire episode today, if you're going to lose your job here, you're going to know 100% outside of burying your head in the sand, yeah. you're going to know 100% why you're getting fired before it happens, and you're choosing not to work right. here, I'm not firing you because I'm a jerk, right. right? And if now at the end of it, if I'm firing you and you think I'm a jerk, if as long as I feel like I've laid out what you're doing wrong, what you needed to do right, and that you didn't mm -hmm. complete those tasks, that's on you, man. That comes back to the the, the saying is uh, uh, to be unclear is unkind. Yep, absolutely. Right. If I can be really, really clear, it's kind to the person. Yep. So once I've set expectations with an employee, they know exactly what's expected of them, what their job is, 
what success looks like, what failure looks like, what not meeting standards look like, what our core values are and how we how we filter decisions. Once we have that set and then there's conflict, they're not working out in their job, something's going on. The, first, the Step two is now understanding what the disconnect is. Where are we missing it? There's three different types of disconnect. Mm-hmm. Disconnect number one, I didn't set the right uh, expectations for you. The right? expectations weren't clear. The job description was, wasn't clear. You you don't really understand what you're supposed to be doing. You didn't know my, that I was expecting you to email me once a week to tell me what's going on, but I've mentioned it a little bit, but you didn't really understand that I wanted that every week, right? Whatever it is, I have not, as a, as a boss, as an employer, set the right expectations. Right. That is a hard thing because you if you thought that you should have set expectations, you would have, right? right. And so sitting and, and, and trying to get in their shoes and understand the perspective of, all right, what, what do they need to hear to understand what I'm expecting? And have I said that out loud? Have I written it down? Have I given it to them in a, in a written format that they can say, you know what, this is what I'm not doing right. right. So that, that's, that's number one. If you feel like that has been done, if you have set those expectations with job description, handbook, training, all that stuff, number two is going to be a, they are not hitting those expectations, right? right? It's either I'm not giving them expectations, they aren't hitting the expectations, uh, or the proper expectations weren't set, right? Um, so I didn't set the expectations, you didn't hit the expectations, or number three, I am not meeting up to the expectations you have of me, right? right? Especially in a small company. Mm-hmm. I am, uh, as the boss, oftentimes we have intertwined responsibilities that where if I am not doing what I promised or am supposed to be doing, it affects your job. That's right. So that's in a very important spot too, because there's been many times, well, not many times, but I can recall a few times where employees are like, well, I didn't have access to the bank account. So why, uh, how, how am I supposed to do that? And I'm like, oh, you're that right. That's on me. Right. And so there's a lot, a lot of times where it's like, I, I didn't, you didn't give me the support that was promised to me and you didn't meet my expectations, boss. Now, most employees are scared to say that. Right. right. But if you can put yourself in their shoes and start thinking through that and even having that conversation, like where's the disconnect right here? What What's going on to cause this disconnect to happen? That's the, that's the starting point. And what is it that you call it? Do you call it like a curious investigator? What is that thing that you say? Like you're, you're, you're in that moment. Let, let's have a conversation. I want to be curious about what's going on. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are we missing it? What, if you're not meeting the expectations, why? Yep. Yeah. And, is it was it me? Is it you, or is it us? And, and we'll talk about that in a second. But but really, the whole goal of this, it, the, the, it's a cheat code for what we do here when it when it is corrective action to firing. The cheat code is curiosity, not conflict. We talked yeah. about this before, but the, but I can say the exact same thing and help you realize what you're doing wrong, as opposed to coming in with a sword and trying to chop at you. Right. right. So the difference is you're late again, Jared. Mm-hmm. Versus Hey, help me understand. Did I not? Did we not talk about? And, and it's not sarcastic, right? Right. Help me understand. Did, did I not set the the expectation we need to be here at eight thirty? Like, is there something I'm missing? There's obviously a disconnect. Where what's What's it? happening? Right. Help me understand this, right? If If it's a help me understand where I'm missing, mm-hmm. that's going to bring everything because now he can't blame me because right. he's got a f- open format to say, well, actually. You show up here at nine every day, so I'm I don't know why I got to be here at eight thirty. Right. Okay. Great. Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Right. Whatever it is, it's help me understand what you don't understand because right. then we need to put that on the table. Right. And that that takes trust. That's it's laying the ground for uh, ability of an open conversation. Yep. As yeah. soon as me as the boss gets defensive, mm-hmm. it's over. Yeah. It's done. You're you're walled up. You you, mm-hmm. you don't care anymore. So the if you were doing one thing when when trying to have these conversations or deal with conflict with your employees or deal with unmet expectations, be curious. You can say the exact same thing, but keep them open as opposed to shutting them down. Small side note, that's also a great way to be with your clients when there's a problem or an issue. And your wife, and, and your, your kids, that's right. and your friends, and any relationship you're in. That's right. If it's, all right, that's this guy's being a jerk. Hey, help me understand, like, what what am I missing here? Like, mm-hmm. like what's, did I, did I offend you? What's going, right? And so right. whatever it is, as opposed to, being uh, combative mm-hmm. and conflict orientatory, yeah, it's yeah. help me understand this. I, I'm curious about what's going on because I'm confused because I don't want you to be upset. Like, what's right. what's up, right? right? So, figuring out that disconnect in an open, honor, uh, honest, vulnerable way mm-hmm. 
is, is step two. I set yeah. expectations. I figured out the disconnect. And if that disconnect is me mm-hmm. or me not meeting expectations or me not setting expectations, we can discuss that. Yeah. If the, if it's you, then we're going to move on to the, to, to finding the issue with you as my employee. Yeah. Right. And so number three is the e- issue is either one of these four things, write these down, memorize these, because these four things are the basis of all conflict in any sort of relationship, especially employee, absolutely uh, employer relationship. So number one is a lack of knowledge, right? There's a lack of knowledge and that's the issue. I asked you to paint that wall. You, you only put one coat on and walked away thinking that it's done. And you didn't know that you were supposed to shake the paint first. You didn't know that you should have put a base coat uh, before painting the she right? Whatever it is, right. you didn't have the knowledge that you were supposed to have. And at that point, if it's a knowledge-based issue, I say, has he been given this knowledge? Have I told him about this knowledge? Uh, ha- do- does he need courses on something? Does he need, right? Whatever it is, where is the knowledge missing? Right. Number two, if it's not knowledge, uh, they-, they do have the knowledge, they've been given the knowledge, it's ability, right? Mm-hmm. They don't have the ability, they don't know how, uh, I-, I just, kn- I know how to paint a wall, I'm just really bad at it. Right. Because maybe you shouldn't be painting a wall, right? Right. Uh, ability is number, number two. Uh, a misunderstanding of what's expected, right? The uh, lack of knowledge or ability, or I don't understand what you're expecting of me. Again, that kind of goes back to the uh, to the last uh, number two, where figuring out the disconnect. Right. Okay. This employee doesn't know what's expected. My wife doesn't know what I was expecting in this moment. My kids didn't realize I was expecting whatever it is. They've got the knowledge and ability. There was just some disconnect in the understanding. That's right. Of what was needed. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So that's number three, and then uh, number four is going to be apathy. Yeah. I just don't care. And and that's that's really a spot that we've found a lot that as a business owner, entrepreneurial driven person, it is so hard to understand. Like I, 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 I we've how many times have we come to the realization like I care about this person's job more than they do. Mm-hmm. Like I want them here more than they want to be here. Yeah. I care more about them being successful and making more money here than they do. And I'm putting in the effort and they are not. Yeah. There's been a lot of times where I had to let people go that I got to that spot because I was going above and beyond trying to help them help yeah. themselves. Yep. And they just weren't doing it. It wasn't, I wasn't creating something complicated for them to do. That's right. It was send an email on Monday. That's right. Every Monday. Yep. And they just consistently weren't doing it. I'm like, okay. Now the, the difficult part of this, and this is where people get lost. All three of the first ones, knowledge, ability, and misunderstanding of expectations can mask as apathy. Uh-huh. I view you as as not caring, mm-hmm. but in, in fact, you didn't even know what I was expecting, right. or you don't know how to do it, and you're too scared to ask because it's the first time I got in this job. And if you engage with curiosity, that's- you're You land do, on apathy. That's right. Well, that guy that's just right. doesn't care. He doesn't give a crap about what mm-hmm. we're doing, right? And that's where we all start with apathy. Like, And, and honestly, if we were all really honest with ourselves, it becomes this- this self as the owner as the boss it's like he can't disrespect me mm-hmm. because i was i've been disrespected and i don't let people disrespect me because yeah. if i'm disrespected then who am i and, and it's this 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 snowball effect that we have uh, uh, of our inner voice talking about they can't disrespect me i'm not going to let them get away or, with it or it's a, a like it's a inability to understand somebody being that way Yep. As an owner and an entrepreneur, yep. you're, I mean, you're grinding and that's just how you operate. You wake up in the morning grinding. Yeah. And then you got somebody who seems like they're just like ho-hum about things. Yeah. Get, get, get out. Yeah. We, we had an employee once that uh, his wife had a really good paying job. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wanted to stay busy. Uh, I mean, he was young. He was, he was late twenties, early thirties, but his wife was making a, a good, good amount of money. Mm-hmm. And uh, we sat down with them. We're like, Hey, listen, you're not exactly, uh, you know, you're underwhelming in, in, in your performance. You're, you're not doing anything wrong, but you're just not doing what's put on your plate. You're just kind of coming up short every time. Right. And he he's like, listen, I love working here. I love this job. I don't need more money. I'd rather have more time. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to, instead of going from 40 to 50 hours to start trying to make more money here, I'd like to go down to 30 hours and maybe just manage five to six jobs at a time and have my Fridays off or like half days some of the time. And he was he was hitting the bare minimum yeah. of like, this is the expectation that our PMs have to be invoicing this. Yep. I could not understand that mindset. Mm-hmm. I am not, not that at all, but it was like, okay, so 
let's readjust expectations. You you cannot expect to get paid more anymore. Mm-hmm. We're not, there's not going to be a raise for you because you're already getting paid max at, at, if, of what a 30-hour person would be. But if you're happy with that. But here are the expectations of what you, what's going to be on your plate. Mm-hmm. You're going to run this amount of jobs. I need this thing's done, and we're going to have this communication. And it was great for a while. Uh, he ended up going off and doing something yeah. with that, that needs a little little less uh, attention. attention. Mm-hmm. But again, it was I didn't understand that mindset. I, I, it was so confusing to me, and it was like, okay, that – I don't have to understand him. I need to set the expectations of what we need. Yeah. And from there, if he can't hit those, then he can't work here. And well, if he can't, it, honestly, and the, that's not a bad person to have on your no, team. No. Somebody who can hold the expectations, yep. but just wants to sit at this level and they're fine at, with it. Great. There's nothing wrong with that so long as they can maintain those expectations. The 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 difference of being a small company and being able to grow into a medium sized company. Mm-hmm is you need the ability and the structure and the expectations and the job descriptions and the processes that are set, procedurals, this is what we do. All of that stuff to grow to the next level is not it is not for you, mm-hmm. not for your personality. It's so we can have 10, 15, 20 employees uh, across the spectrum in personality mm-hmm. and mindset, and they all work well and we get the best out of them because we all have these set expectations right. of, of what's happening. Right. So that's how you grow. A small business and where we got stuck with in the beginning, if they don't have the drive I have, if they can't make decisions like me, then they can't work here. Right. Right. And that's a very small number of people. Those and most of those- unicorns what, are real hard to find. Because they're all working for themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't need right. to come work for me because they're an entrepreneur like me. Right? right. And so it it it's it's one of those catch-22s where it's like, that's the guy I want, but that's the guy that I can't get because he, he doesn't need me. Right. So right, that, right. that moving moving from that those four things knowledge ability misunderstanding and apathy mm-hmm. are the four uh, four spots where when we are assessing an employee who's underperforming which one of these things are it right. are, are are the issue mm-hmm. from there if we can identify them we go into corrective action all reasons above need correction corrective action it, corrective yeah. action if done right is a very positive and healthy thing inside mm-hmm. of your company. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it hurts in the moment. It's not fun in the moment, but you get thanked afterwards. If you do it right, the person ends up making more money here and we corrective action pushes us to making the decision of this person's gone or this person gets yeah. it and is pick and, and is now hitting us. Well, and, and, and what may, what, what turns the heat up a little bit on that conversation is that to do that correctly, mm-hmm. Um, you actually need a corrective active uh, corrective action document yep. that you're writing down. Here are the things that are are issues. Yep. Here are the moving forward. If you want to keep your job expectations, now sign on the bottom that you're. I'm going to sign on the bottom, and it goes in your file. Yep. Right. It feels like corporate level, but yeah. over and over and over again, we have not done that. Yeah. And wished we had. I mean, we've had a, a bunch. So. In ProServe Alliance, we give you that paperwork, we give you the job descriptions, we give it, and we help you edit it and work through exactly what you need for your company. And what we hear so much is, "I'm I'm too small. I got one employee. I don't I don't need that that series of paperwork." And it's like, you do because you gotta. You're not gonna get big until you're acting big, until you look big, until you have structure in place to support a bigger company. You're not going anywhere. Like right. that's the paperwork needed to do this right to get a second and a third and a fourth employee. So. Mm-hmm. For sure, getting that corrective action paperwork helps you walk through exactly what you need to do, not just, I don't like that you're late and I didn't like what you mm-hmm. said to that guy. All right, fix those things. That's right. that's not corrective action. Corrective action is, here are the expectations that we had set when you started here. What is there any, un, any, any of this that is unclear? Mm-hmm. Next, here's how I'm perceiving you and I know you're not that, but that's how you're being perceived right now. You. When I interviewed you and what I know from you personally is you're not a lazy person, but that's what's being perceived. What's going on? Help me understand that disconnect there. And the the last part of the corrective action is this is what we need to do to hit the minimums to be able to keep your job. And I think you can do it. Or what do you believe you can hit this stuff? And if not, then we should call it now. Right. And if so, I need you to commit to this. Right. And so we'll talk about that in the next step with the corrective action. Uh, but all of these, all of these uh, issues of these four issues what we believe, three of the issues get two of these corrective actions meetings, which we'll talk about in a second. One of these issues gets one corrective action. Right. 
every single employee that's fired outside of something outlandish like they grab the butt of an uh, of a client or they pull the gun out in a fireable offense yeah out, outside yeah. of extremely fireable ex uh, 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 offenses that that they do every single person gets a corrective action because you you owe it to them to and owe it to the employees that are watching the situation to know I am trying my hardest to make sure that we didn't do anything wrong right. and that we believe in this guy until he doesn't believe in him anymore. Right. So the three that I, I do two corrective actions on are going to be knowledge, ability, and misunderstanding, mm -hmm. right? So how those three go is, hey, what's missing here? Here's your expectations. Let's figure this out together. It feels like you just don't have the training necessary for this. So why don't we do this corrective action? We're going to have you taking a course for this, and there's this thing that that I, I checked out or we, we signed you up for where it's a management course that's a three series, whatever it is. Right. Also, what, what I'm going to need differently from you is this, this, and this. And so if you can go through this course, if you can start hitting these goals, I need this email, and it needs to be specific stuff, mm -hmm. this, this, and this, I think you're going to be doing better here, and I think you are going to be excelling in this job, right? Essentially, in all three of these categories, knowledge – ability and uh, what was misunderstanding. misunderstanding is uh, what tool is missing that if I give that give it to them, mm -hmm. they now will be able to step out of that. I don't have the knowledge. Yeah. I don't have the ability or there's a misunderstanding. What's the tool that I need to add to this? Clarity, if it's a misunderstanding. Yep. Um, if it's knowledge, it's some, co some kind of training yep. uh, or, or whatever it is. Um, so what's the tool that we need to add into this to help them be able to succeed? Exactly. And which is why you end up with two instead of just one corrective action. You know what? We've 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 been curious. Mm -hmm. We've investigated. Mm -hmm. We determined it's one of these three things. Here are the things that I'm going to do to support you in doing better. Yeah. Here are the expectations. Yep. Right. And then then you find out whether that tool is going to be used, and they actually succeed. Or yeah, and that's and why you run two of them. And and people get confused with knowledge and ability being the same thing. They mm -hmm. they get confused what's what. And so a great example is we had an office manager that came and worked for us once, and she seemed great, knew what she was talking about, had had ran another company like front office of another company for a long time. Uh, she got in day one. She grabs the mouse with two hands and is moving it and is pecking at the keys one with with a single finger yeah. and we were like hey have you ever been on a computer before and she was like oh we did everything on paper at my old office right mm -hmm. that's an ability thing yeah. i can give her quickbooks training it i can also give her training on how to use a, a computer but she didn't have the ability to 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 do the job right she didn't know that she didn't know math she wasn't good with math at all mm -hmm. and so ability wise she just it wasn't in her skill set now the same person that's like, I'm really good on a computer. I've just never worked in QuickBooks before. That's a knowledge thing. I can yeah. train you on QuickBooks. I can send you through a QuickBooks course and give you that knowledge and your current abilities. You're, you seem really good at math. You seem like you know finances pretty well. You're great with a computer. You're good with software. So let me give you the knowledge of QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. And now, you, now you're now you ready to rock, yeah. right? Yeah. So identifying the difference of if I give this person something, can they will they exceed mm -hmm. uh, uh, the expectations or... Is it one of those things that if I give that person this knowledge, they still don't have the tools right. to, to implement that? Well, and, and sometimes like w with ability, and I, I had somebody that worked for me that I gave them a lot of opportunities to get better and change and do. And what I came to find out, and it's not something that I said to his face, but he just didn't have the intelligence to do the job. Mm -hmm. It was too high level for him, which is okay. Yeah. If I had another position that uh, would be more suited for his ability, yeah. I would have tried to move him into that position, yep. right? That would have been the tool or the solution. Yeah. You know what? I just don't think this job position is great for you, but I have this other one. We just didn't at the time. He would have been great at executing tasks and mm -hmm. orders. That's right. But he was not good at identifying what tasks needed to get yeah. done. Well, his, his big issue was he didn't know how to uh, solve puzzles. Yes. 
He wasn't a problem solver. Yep. He was an executor. Yep. And as a project manager, you have number one ability is a problem solver. Yep. You have to be able to be a problem solver. That's right. So anyways, that's a, a good example of a ability issue. So ability, knowledge, and misunderstanding, those three, we do two corrective action, mm-hmm. right? The first one is, hey, this is what's going on. What's happening? What are you missing? Uh, and honestly, a lot of times, if you do this conversation right, it's mm-hmm. actually Clark, you, you keep saying that I should have done that, but that's not in my job description. I, I was never trained on that. And that just kind of got on my plate over the last three months. Like, I, is that my job? Right. And at that point, it's like, holy cow, mm-hmm. you're right. That is your job in my in my brain, but I never told you it was your job. Right? And so right. there's a lot of clarity in these meetings. And that's why you got to go in with humility because a lot of the time it's your fault. You, yeah. We just don't like to say it, right? Yeah. It, well, and there's a, there's a reality, especially with like an office manager position, there are task expectations yep. that trying to get a comprehensive list on a piece of paper is impossible. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you run up on something you're like, why didn't this get done? Like, I, I didn't know that I was, yeah. I saw the emails, but I thought you guys handled the tax stuff or this thing or whatever. That's for, you know. Yeah. Our, so, our office manager training and task list is like eight pages long, <laughs> line by line. And it's so overwhelming day one for them to see it. And yeah. it's like, listen, we're doing page one today and for the next four weeks, that's all you're doing. You're yeah. not messing with QuickBooks. You're not messing with this. You're not paying crews. You're not, all you're doing is this stuff. And once you get a grasp of that, we're going to move on to page two. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a, trust me, we've got a training process for you. You don't need to know all eight pages of tasks that you need to do, but we do have them spelled out. Yeah. Right. And and so it's there as referenced for when you get to all these things and you're owning this, that's when we're going to talk about a race for you. That's when we're going to talk about this. That's when we're, this, this is going to happen right. with, with some goals. So first round on those three things, we do the corrective action. Hey, this is kind of broken. We need to fix it with this stuff. And this needs to be the result. Yeah. Right. Um, and what we're going to do is talk again in 30 days. And we're just going to check in no matter what, whether you're killing it or not, we're going to have another meeting in 30 days to sit down and look at this stuff. Yeah, yeah. That way, when you follow up with them, they don't think they're getting fired. When they when when you sit back down with them and they know that that accountability meeting is coming. Right. And nine times out of 10, they perform for that 30 days. Mm-hmm. And then it's the next 30 days that you worry about. So you got to watch after that second meeting, the, the second corrective action meeting is like, hey, we're is let's let's look at your performance things are looking great that's that's good they stop performing again and at that point it's sitting them down and it's a little more uh serious of a conversation less less investigating what's missing and saying hey i'm really confused about what's going on because we talked about this and i know you got the ability because you did it last month Mm -hmm. i know you i know you can do that because you were doing it but then you kind of fell back into your old ways like what what's going on Right. Tell, tell me what's going on. And a lot of times in that second meeting, I, I, I've i talked people out of working here, right? Like mm-hmm. it seems like you can do the project management role, but it seems like you're, you're not, your talents aren't there. And right. it seems like you don't enjoy it. And it takes you three to four times the amount of work to do this job than it does my other PMs because it's just naturally how their mm-hmm. brain works. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you like this job? I mean, I know you need the money and but if this isn't the job for you, I can help you get to the next job that, that is for you, right? And that's the conversation of like, it seems like this isn't for you. Like, what's going on? And I need you to talk me out of it that it right. is for you right? In, in that second corrective action. And be like, we corrected it. It got better. Or if, if it didn't get better, the, the second Again, meeting. that type of conversation just lays the ground for having open conversation. Yeah, yeah. I am here and I am for you. And yeah. this isn't the best place. Well, I want I want to help you get to what's what's best for you. And it's the mindset of this company isn't good if you don't have the best the best for you while you're here. Yep. And if it's not here, I'm going to help you get there. But it, I don't want to fake. I don't want to be uh, angry at you all the time, and you feel really terrible because you're not performing well. Like I, I want to throw all that out, and I want to I want to see if this is the best fit for you long term. And if it's not, let's get an exit strategy where. You get the jobs done that are getting done. We cut you down to half part time in two weeks from now. I, I help you find another job. I think you'd be really good. I got a buddy who owns a landscaping company. You might be good over, right? right? Whatever it is, let me help you get to where you're going if here isn't your permanent resting yeah. spot, right? And that's a, that's in the top three. So when we get to apathy, yep. what does that look like? Well, and the apathy one comes out, again, a lot of this stuff I try to identify before mm-hmm. the corrective action meeting. But, but I'm asking them in that meeting mm-hmm. and I'm trying to decipher 
what, why are they answering what they're answering and which one of these four are they fitting into, yeah. right? And so if it's, well, I just didn't have time for that. Yeah. I just didn't, yeah, I meant to get around to that. Oh, yeah, well, sorry, I'm just not good with you. Well, sometimes setting up a plan for the first the first three yeah. helps you determine that it's not knowledge, misunderstanding, or ability. Yeah. It's actually apathy. Yeah. But like the, it, when it's unclear, applying something to knowledge or whatever will yeah. help you go, I, I see what it is. No means. employee is going to sit in a corrective action and be like, I just don't really care about this job. Like, <laughs> they're not going to say that. You're not right. going to find the apathy. But- their answers are revealing. Like, I didn't realize that was part of my job. Or to be honest, Clark, I just, I don't know how to do that. Can can you help me understand the, easy, the easiest way to find that out is to set a very clear yep. su- executables. Yep. Like I said, a email to my client every Monday. Yep, that's right. Period. It's very simple. It's, yep. There's no gray area about it. It's not and, communicate more with your client. Yeah. It's I need one email every Monday and then a second one either Thursday or Friday to yeah. let them know what's happening yeah. in that week. And if they're if I've spelled that out and they're like, yep, no problem, sign on the dotted line, I'm going to do that, and then they still don't. Got those easy measurables. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, this is apathy. You've got to a place where you don't like the job. It's too hard for you. Yeah. Whatever it is, we got to we gotta start moving on to yeah. the next more yeah. serious. Any, I mean- uh, uh, that that being a great example, because even if I'm I'm not my my brain doesn't naturally work where I got to communicate all the time. Mm-hmm. I now know I need to do that. So if I don't at least put in the effort, even though I don't have the ability to naturally do that all the time, right? If I as an employee am not okay, I I know they need email, so I got to change how I do things to make sure I'm sitting in my front of my computer. If they don't have that drive to to try and correct their ability, then it's never going to work. Empathy. Yeah, right. so, writing's on the wall. So with with apathy, that that's going to get one meeting. Oftentimes, it's the second meeting, that's the right. first one. That's but right. the apathy meeting is, hey, you know that this is what's supposed to be happening. You like, I don't need a corrective action with someone who says they're going to do it, uh, an estimate and don't show up, and they there's three or four times in a row that they just ghosted our clients. Right. That's not ability. It is a that's not is, knowledge. This is unacceptable behavior yeah. to keep your job. Yep. If this happens again, we're going to have to have a harder conversation. Yeah, right? is is how that typically goes. Yep. Um, it's less about uh, I need to provide tools for you to know yep. how to do. It's clear, and we had one of our longest term employees. We had that conversation because it it wasn't a misunderstanding. Yeah, he knew he just wasn't doing it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so we had to have that conversation, and we set up. Here are the eight executables that the next time we meet, if any one of these are not completed, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about whether you have a job or not. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and I I would like you to start planning to replace that employee. Yeah. Right. For for us, when we get in that spot with the PM, it's I'm going to start hunting, and it's either going to be a new employee for us, and we're going to add a PM, or it's going to be a replacement. But either way. I'm not going to put all all my eggs in your basket to where if I fire you or you leave mm-hmm. or this goes sideways that I'm screwed and I, Again, I can't handle the, it. The writing's on the wall. Yeah. Is there a margin of opportunity that they could change and, and things would get better? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Most likely it's not. And the hiring process takes one month, two uh, months, three months. And so yeah. I can go through that process and it feels like wasted work because I think this guy's going to work out. But if I spend a month going through that and find the right person, mm-hmm. I ha- I now have a month leeway of I understand where this guy's at. He's actually really correcting himself and killing it. So I'm not going to make this job offer. I'm going to tell this person, hey, I'm not moving forward with a hire right now, but I'm going to keep your resume mm-hmm. and call in a couple months when I'm ready to make my next hire. Uh, or I've got them uh, another bullet in the gun to where if that person quits, I can shoot mm-hmm. it right away and I- I'm-, I'm up to speed right away. So prepping for that not in a threatening way, not in a, I'm going to replace you way, but then like, I need to make sure that all my eggs aren't in your basket. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the corrective action. My goal in a corrective action meeting is, is to always have at the end of the conversation, one sentence. My goal is to be able to say at the end of that meeting, Jared, please don't make me fire you. Yeah. You're here because I like you. You're here because I think you could be on this team. And if you don't do what we're what we're talking about, you're forcing me to fire you. And please don't make me fight for your job harder than you're doing. Yeah. Like, is that fair to ask? And right. And it's if you do this meeting right, the employee has no other uh, other yeah. uh, other thing to say outside of, okay, I won't. I'm not. I I'm not gonna. Yeah. Or I, 
I'm I'm going to be mad at you because you forced me to do something that I didn't want to do. Yeah. I don't want to let you go. I think that you have opportunity to, to, to succeed here. Yeah. But if you don't do these things, you're going to force my hand. And I'm going to be upset about that because I don't want to do it. Yeah. The, the, if I were to break down a corrective action meeting into three points, point number one is do they have full clarity on what they're doing wrong mm-hmm. and, and what's expected to, to do right? Yeah. Right. That, that's the most important part. Number two, what happens if you don't correct this stuff, I want to be very clear. This is what happens next. Yeah. We're going to meet no matter what, but this is what's going to come out of that meeting or any future meetings, I can't keep I can't keep doing your job for you. This is what happens next. And number three, is there anything else that I need to know that I'm not supporting you with because I want you here and I'm going to be pissed if you make me fire you? Right. Like those are the three points I want to make in those meetings. Like I care about you. I care about you being here. And please show me that you care too. Mm-hmm. And if I, I need that buy-in from you, right, that, that middle one, right, I set the expectations, clarity of what's going to happen. And part of that is, do you agree that this is the issue and this needs to be corrected? Right. Yes. Do you do you think you can correct this stuff and keep working here? Yes. Okay. So I'm getting that buy-in where we agree that this stuff needs to happen. These are the results that they don't. And I'm going to be angry if, if, if this doesn't happen right. uh, because I hate firing people because I really enjoy having you on our team. Yep. So that's a corrective action meeting. And it's not insincere. Like I, legit, you shouldn't hire someone if if you don't feel that way. Like yeah. if you're not like this guy's an addition to our team, I'm happy that they're here. Uh, so that's that's the corrective action. From there, if they don't meet up to those expectations and you have to let them go, where there's a a full way that we do firing the yeah. firing conversation when we let someone go. We're gonna cover that in the next podcast where talking through how to do that properly, how to do it right, how to do it legally, yeah, right? right? Some states are 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 different. In our state, it's a- Free, uh, to, free to fire. Yeah, yeah, it's a, you can fire anyone for any reason, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's other states where there's certain- More regulations. Uh, regulations yeah. you have mm-hmm. to do, that's right. Mm-hmm. And so for us, the the goal of having the, the next podcast is let's make sure you're firing people well. And I know mm-hmm. people are like, that's stupid. If they're not gonna be here, then get rid of them. It's about reputation. It's about treating people right. And it's about helping people around you, right? If well, our em- employees know, like, you you can blame me if you, want, if you want to be blind, but we both know you didn't buy in right. to this job and you were pu- not putting forth your effort that we agreed upon that I was paying you a certain amount of money for a certain amount of effort. And yeah. we both know that that's the truth. Well, and that, that podcast will go through W-2s as well as 1099s. Yep. Cruise. Yep. You know, if you've got to if you've got to exit a crew, you got to fire a crew off a job. How to, you know, yep. we'll, we'll go through and revisit that as well as the the main focus is employees, but we'll yep. also talk about that. So, something that could be confusing, but circling back to the beginning, I said there's two things that were most likely you're going to keep your employee, and two things that you're most likely going to fire. Mm-hmm. Of those four things we listed, we said three of them get two, right. and one, right? So let me let me define those two real quick. Yeah. The two that I'm going to to coach and help a guy through is going to be a uh, misunderstanding and knowledge, knowledge, right? If you misunderstand, let me clarify. Great. We're good to go. Now you're doing your job. Knowledge. Great. How do I get you that knowledge? You want to shadow one of our other PMs? Do we need to get you some training? Uh, we've, we've had a guy go through a, getting his contractor's license course, not to get his license, but to learn about mm-hmm. just the basics of construction. Uh, this book, Building Construction Illustrated by Francis Ching, mm-hmm. amazing book for new PMs. Yeah. Uh, all that to say, the knowledge and the misunderstanding, nine times out of ten, are going to get coached through to where they become a better employee. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, ability and apathy, uh, I have not seen someone come back from those two things. No. Both of those things, even even if I identify like it's either ability or knowledge, we'll see. Mm-hmm. If it's ability, it's very difficult because it's just a bad fit. They're uh, a great person. They're... Ability that doesn't matter how many tools I can give them, they just yep. don't have the ability to do the job for yep. whatever reason. Yeah, and and ability doesn't mean you're incapable. Mm-hmm. It means you are your your skill set and your personality don't align with, with what's what needed for that That's job. Right. right? Like right. we we've had guys that are really smart guys, really good at, at a, a ton of things. They aren't good at managing crews, right? Yeah. They can either get walked over more, they're more of a passive personality, or they're the other side where they're too strict and just yell at guys and treat them as slaves when it's like there's no relational part with their whatever it is. Right. They can change and do it a different way, 
but they're just not built that way. They don't have the ability to live that as as their norm inside the job, and it's never going to end well for you. Or, or most of the time, when you get when you get to that place, the realization is that I have this person in the wrong job position for yep. their chemical makeup, who yep. they are, right? Yep. And if I have another job within my company that they would be a better fit, yep. I want to help them get there, yeah. right? But if I don't. It, it, the the writing's going to be on the wall because they're never going to be able to succeed in that position. Yep. If it's apathy, we know where that's going. Yep. Right. There's there's you're really not going to come back from that one. Yeah. Um. You know what you get is the guy that's going to I'm going to grind my way through and I'm going to you know. It, yeah. It, it's fading. Yeah. It's it's, it's, it's a fast. the the apathy is such a you can turn it on and turn it off, but it's who they are. Yeah. And so they'll turn it on until they get past. Being, being their feet held to the fire mm-hmm. and then it goes right back to where it is. Yeah. And how many times have we done that six, seven times mm-hmm. in a row of like, hold their feet to the fire, they're great, they fall off. They need to be yelled at again. Uh-huh. Hold their feet to the fire, yeah. they're great, they fall off. Hey, have you yelled at him yet? It's been six months. You need mm-hmm. to yell at that guy again to get him mm-hmm. back on. We're not we're not in the business of micromanaging. Yeah. If you can't fit into the job and care about what you're doing and self-motivate, it's very hard to be a PM in our company. Yeah. So that's the clarity on the two and two. Yeah, exactly. So. That's what we're identifying. If it's ability and apathy, I'm still doing a corrective action, but I'm I am definitely looking for a another right. hire. Mm-hmm. If it's the other two, uh, I might take a second before I start the job hunt. If it, you know, if it's knowledge and misunderstanding, both those can turn into actually being apathy. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna see how it goes. Typically, before you find out that we're gonna make a decision to move on from this person in those two categories, you're you're 60, 90 days out. Yeah. For sure. At least. For yeah. sure. So th- that's kind of the clarification of those. Think about it n- within yourself. If you're an employee, listen to this. Think about how you're how you're portraying yourself in your job. How uh, uh, do you do you struggle with knowledge or ability or not understanding what you're supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. Or are you apathetic? Then find another job. That's start right. hunting. You know, in our company, come and talk to us. Uh-huh. Like for, for me, to uh, when an employee ha- has come in before, we had one guy who was like, I really want to follow a, a career in music. Like, I feel like I'm going to be, I mean, this was forever. A Do, long time ago. Him, oh, yeah. But yeah. he was like, I, I want to be a musician. And I want to follow that. I, I'm not passionate about construction. And I was like, awesome. That's That was apparent. And you saying that makes it so much better because now I felt that, but now it makes sense. I know why. And so I'm fine with you working here. Let's, let's get a strategy. What does success look like in the music business for you? And what does success look like for you here? Now, I'm going to have to let you go if you can't hit these things. Right. I don't want to. I want to help launch you into your music career. And that that would be awesome for, for me. Uh, and so talking through that stuff with your employees, like, listen, that's that's great. I I am an idiot if I think you are every single person that works here <laughs> is passionate about construction right. and wants to build ProServe to the next level, right? That's that's pulling, you know, closing your eyes and putting blinders on. Yeah. So knowing that this isn't the final destination for everybody is not a threat. It is healthy and it's part of normal company. And so saying, hey, this is how we get you to the next level. Is it here? Great. So this is how you move up here. If it's yeah. somewhere else, no problem. This is expectations while you're here and let and help me out. Don't just quit on me. Give me a month heads up if you're going to leave. But I also, these are how you're going to be measured. I'm going to have to let you go if you don't hit right. these things. Right. So that's it. Next Next podcast, tune in. We talk about the firing conversation, whether it's W-2 or 1099, how to do it well, how to be above reproach when you're doing it, and how not to ruin your name with others because you you will get a name in the oh, industry yeah. as you grow in your area, in your city. People are like, don't work for those guys. Those guys are real jerks and all, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, There's there's plenty of people we fired that feel that way, uh-huh. and I'm glad those people are gone mm-hmm. because I feel like most of the time we've done it really well in yeah. terms of if they see it, awesome. If they don't see it, I tried my absolute hardest and I can put my head on my pillow at night without feeling like I did someone wrong. Yeah. So Yeah. Thanks for joining us. That's right. That was a that was a good one. Join us next week. If you need if you want some of that paperwork also for your employees, reach out to us. We've got some partnerships and different levels of partnerships that we're rolling out to where we can kind of build and choose a la carte what you need for your company. If you just have a question, email us. Yeah. Uh go to our website, proservealliance.com. Check us out. Uh, We'd love to interact and talk with you guys. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those all, all the things. spots in the yeah. podcast, anywhere you get podcasts, and, and YouTube too. Yeah. So yeah. anywhere that you uh, consume stuff, we are there. So 
Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. See you next time. Bye.